microphone And you have downed in your car to your home Every week it's all the new A deep talk or an interview She'll make you laugh, she'll make you cry When it's dark out, she's a light When you're down, get you feeling right Oh man, that, that sounds fun Hi friends, welcome to another episode of That Sounds Fun. I'm your host, Annie F. Downs. I'm so happy to be here with you today. But before we dive into today's conversation, I want to tell you about one of our incredible sponsors, AG1 by Athletic Greens. Taking care of your health is not always easy, but there are some simple things we can do to help. And one of mine is AG1. It's just one scoop mixed in really cold water once a day, every day. And it makes me feel more energized and helps me check off a lot of my nutritional bases for the day. That's because each serving of AG1 has my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Plus, I love their travel packs because if I'm running short on time in the morning or I'm traveling, I can take them with me so I don't have to skip out on my AG1 routine. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it is AG1, and that is why I've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership over your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash sounds fun. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash sounds fun. Y'all, today on the show, I get to talk with my friends who may be new to you, maybe not, but they are amazing. Audrey Elledge and Elizabeth Moore. They are incredible writers and best-selling authors of Liturgy for Hope. And now their brand new book, Liturgies for Wholeness, 60 Prayers to Encounter the Depth, Creativity, and Friendship of God in Ordinary Moments. Y'all, it is just beautiful. I love sitting down with them at the Hepzibah House in New York City where I get to record That Sounds Fun while I am in New York. And I love these gals so much. I love being friends with them. They are such a gift. You are going to love this conversation. So here it is, me and my friends, Audrey and Elizabeth. That sounds fun. Gals, welcome to That Sounds Fun. Thank Thank you, you, Andy. This is such a treat. It really is. Um, I think you both know this, but we have mutual friends, and my phone blew up about three months ago. People being like, but everyone did this. Okay. Uh, do you know Audrey and Elizabeth? <laughs> I didn't know it blew up. It, it was like multiple <laughs> okay. people. It was multiple people being oh. like, I don't know if you've, I was like, something is happening in the that ethos is, wow. of the world. Oh my wow. God. So then, I, then I looked at all the people we share, and we share a lot of yeah. things here. Well, in New York city. Christian community is yeah. something. It is so small. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people. It's, There's it's a lot thriving, of believers but here. Yeah. But everyone knows everyone. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I'm going to ask you what sounds fun to you because that's how we're starting things in our 10th year of the podcast. When you answer, will you lead with your name just so yes. as people are listening, they can connect your voice with your story? So why don't you yes. start, Elizabeth? Tell us what yes. sounds fun fun to you. Okay. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Moore. Um, and what sounds fun to me is so simple, but truly being somewhere warm. <laughs> I, <laughs> being somewhere warm. <laughs> that sounds so fun. I went to Miami. We're recording in New York. For We're recording in New York We're back City. in the house of a house. It is a solid, well, woke up, it's like 30 degrees and sunny, which is great. Yeah. All of January, it was- Sunny makes a difference. It was not sunny for yeah. a solid month. Now yeah. it's sunny, which we love. Um, but yeah, being anywhere sunny and warm on a beach- would be and you just went so to Miami? Is that just oh, like- yeah. So I was saying I just went to Miami, which was a very fun getaway, but it was not quite the warmth that I desired. Oh. It was like 75 and cloudy and you need windy. Like and I was like, Ugh, it's almost there. <laughs> yeah. I need Brazil. I need by like the equator. San Diego. Right. Yeah, I need, yeah. I need by the equator. So that sounds fun. We don't want California this week when we're recording because it is oh, true. boring, right? Oh, we don't want that. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. So tough. Here's the problem in New York. I mean, I think there are no problems here. I'm honeymoon phase for sure. <laughs> yeah. But um, your buildings that we we live in we don't control the heat is that true in your building that's true, true in my very building. true yes. so i wake up and it is yes. like warm and i'm like oh this is great yeah and then you say siri what's the difference and she's like zero yeah like, oh i'm so surprised because like, but i'm building so is hot. hot yeah, yeah. but i'm sweating oh, inside oh yeah. you're just at the mercy of your super yes. yeah. which yes. is like a thing that no other state or city i, I feel like it. deals yeah. with yeah well you I might be so wrong and uninformed yeah, by I that but i think you're I think right it's only here yes. yeah. so your inside places. is warm but it's just the outside inside it's getting is, places yes it's getting places it's commuting it's getting on the subway it's the wind the wind the hurts me yeah the wind is so painful actually and the like sunny side of the sidewalk and the 
not sunny yes. side of the sidewalk is like a 20 degree difference. It is literally so different. It yeah. is, I chase sun when I'm walking anywhere. I'm oh, like, over yes. there, over there, yes. over there. Annie, that's a poem. I think just said. Oh my gosh, y'all, can, wow. y'all are the poets, not I. Not I. Like, was that a poetic line? Okay, um, yeah. down. Audrey, what sounds fun to you? Okay, I'm not even going to like cap here. <laughs> well done. What sounds fun to me is a co writing session with Taylor Swift. <gasps> I kn- oh. okay. As we record so, this, oh. she just announced at the yes, Grammys last night that her new album is dropping this April. Yes. Yeah, it is. and it's called "Not the Dead Poet Society." I always accidentally say that. Yes. in the twenty four hours. I yeah, always, always, say always. always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As many <laughs> times as I talked about it, the tortured poets department or something like that. Yes. And I saw that and I said, "Wait a second. So a fun thing about Elizabeth and I is that our group of writer friends, one of our favorite things to do is free write poetry together. Like someone brings a prompt, we gather, we just go for it, and then we share it with each other and just like fall to the ground. Yeah. (laughs) Like such a good outlet. Yes. And so to be in on a co-writing session with Taylor Swift, not even like songwriting, just whatever she's doing when she comes up with words and turns of phrases. Yeah. Would love. Would love. Would love. We're actually part of a poetry collective called Unfortunately I Love You, which is so aligned with with Taylor's new album. Yes. It's about unrequited love. It's about unrequited love. Y'all are in a whole group about it. So when she dropped her album last night, we were like, what? Like <laughs> she is our girl. She, yeah. yeah. She yeah. She's a sad girl yeah. with us. She how, took all our SEO value. Though, how about so. yeah, 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 yeah. No, she's absolutely. only gonna help. It's yeah. only gonna it's only, boost. Oh, yeah. So. She's creating a moment for like sad girl poetry. Yeah. Yes. And we're here yes. for it. Okay, so is that how y'all started writing together at all? Is that how you started writing liturgies together? No. That's no. Not, that's farther that back. Is, yes, that is farther back. Shall mm-hmm. we go there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's start let's me go. there. Okay, let's start. Yeah. There. So well at the very beginning is our friendship. So Elizabeth and I had Two mutual friends, Jillian and Claire, if you're listening to this, we yes. love you. They yes. probably you forever, love Jillian you. and Claire. <laughs> yeah. Forever. I thank you as well. I thank you for this and they, for this. They made yes. so much happen. Um, we owe it to them. But they, okay, so from my perspective, they had always told me, do you know Elizabeth Moore? Kind of like what yeah. they were saying to you. Yeah. Like, she has this writing blog. You should really read her writing. I oh, think well, you would my be. writing. And y'all already lived here? <laughs> like the way. No, this, no. okay. Well, yeah, because who was blogging? I know. I'm like, who is reading my writing blog? Ever, yeah. Jillian and Claire are the only ones wow. who are reading And writing. then me. Yeah. Hey, I became Elizabeth's biggest fan. This was in college. Yeah. So a decade ago at this yeah. point. Um, and so when Elizabeth moved to New York, I had already been living here for one year. I moved in 2017. Yeah. Elizabeth came in 2018 because we were connected and we got dinner with Elizabeth's parents yeah, in did. the Upper West Side at Jacob's Pickles. Hey, I ate there for and brunch yesterday. Hey, I it's mean, so delicious. It's so, so good. good. Yeah, it's so good. It. We'll taste the South. Yeah. Um, and we just like were fizzing, just at the budding friendship to come. Yes, you know, yes. when you meet someone and you're like, oh, you're cut from the same yes. soul cloth. Yes. You yeah. are my person. It was, it yeah. was that yeah. kind of kindred, yes. kindred spirit. Kindred mm-hmm. spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when Elizabeth moved to New York, we just connected over writing as well. We were friends, and then we were like, oh, you like words. I like words. You like reading. Yeah. I like reading. Yeah. And so I guess that was the origin um mm-hmm. and then i don't think we had ever done a project together like a writing project so hold on slow me down a little bit when you so you move here in 17 and you move yes. here in 18 yep and did y'all like immediately get in the same friend group go to the same church like was it like yeah. did you say can i be in your yes. life for yes <laughs> yeah that's kind of <laughs> how it yes. works here i mean that's kind of how it works <laughs> yes. here it seems is you're kind of like so hi you're the only person i know Literally, can i go yes. with you yes fill in the blank everywhere yes. so audrey had been here for a year before i had mm-hmm. i moved to new york on a Bye. hope and a dream yeah. my dream was to work in publishing okay. which i did and i've since changed industries but i worked in publishing for four years which was so Where'd fun and work? amazing penguin random house hey. for the vintage and anchor imprints <gasps> did you work with tina Loved that tina did not work oh. directly with tina no she was over different imprints She's unbelievable is tina is she with our book though we might work with it tina sounds, yeah i think she might be book stuff because um book publication know. waterbrook oh yeah i bet you do yeah you're great so book publication and my old job were both under penguin random house Got but it. we're not connected at all like, oh fascinating people were like oh did that like is that how help? you did this i was like yeah. honestly no <laughs> like, no <laughs> i just actually like not... the best ones that is happened. not how publishing works no, yeah, it's definitely yeah. not how publishing works i knew too much um right. <laughs> but yeah but I, I moved to new york without a job just hoping that i would work in publishing i had done this publishing course prior to moving to new york through columbia which was wonderful um but yeah i moved here and i was like i'm just hoping things work out um, connected with Audrey the summer before. So yeah, I moved here. And I think my first night in New York, my, maybe my first sec, my first full day in New York, I was like, God, I think I got dinner with you. Wow. And Audrey invited me to her community group, which yeah. of course I'm like saying yes to everything. So <laughs> you have to, yes. went to her yeah. community group, church of the city. I obviously didn't have a church yet either. Yeah. So I just kind of 
dove in, got plugged in immediately. And yeah. it was, yeah. That's Audrey, why'd you yeah. move here? On a dream. <laughs> I just moved here with a dream in, in my pocket. In New York. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. So I had only lived in the South or Southwest Tennessee and Texas before moving here. Nashville in the girl. whole time. Nashville yes. for grad school, Baylor for undergrad. Oh, there so you go. Really in that bubble. And I don't think I was made for that bubble. It's a very specific like pace and I was craving fast. I was craving um, like being surrounded by dreamers and like the the biggest of the big. Um, not knowing at that point all the downsides to that as well and like how you can find those pockets elsewhere. But I was just so fixated on Northeast New York that I just after grad school just applied to every job I could think of wow. in New York. Just like sent out applications to companies that sounded cool where yeah. I had zero connections. Yeah. Didn't even like think of the word networking. I was just like, we're just putting it out there. Right. Um, tried trusting God. It got really hard because I was living <laughs> I with tried this one thing. <laughs> I gave that a go. I, so I did. I work. met some friends. I tried trusting God. Yeah. I, that was a mix. That wasn't it. So then I took back over. And then I took back and over. Yeah. That definitely wasn't yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went back to trusting God. Yeah, there you go. Um, but that summer, I between grad school and moving to New York, when I was desperate to move to New York or Boston, I was yeah. considering that too. I was doing interviews on Zoom before Zoom was really a yeah. thing. Living with my parents at night, they would go to sleep at like 8 p.m. And I would be downstairs in my PJs just like sending out applications. Yes. Um, and I work for Sparknotes. So right. I saw they're owned by Barnes & Noble. I saw Barnes & Noble posted this editor position at Sparknotes that I was deeply unqualified for. I just sent out the application. I don't even know if I prayed over it. I just yeah. sent it out. I was like, this sounds so fun. But I'm just, this sounds fun. Yeah. I'm applying to everything that sounds fun. Love that. And so... Somehow I got the job. And so got the job, moved to New York like two weeks later, wow. knowing no one, having no like true connections in the city, didn't even know like that I would be carrying groceries so far from my apartment. So I, I got far. an apartment mm -hmm. so far from the subway, just wasn't oh, like, yeah. just didn't know city life. And yeah. so I was like more fearless than I probably have ever been since or maybe ever will be. And it was like it was one year of fearlessness yeah. that got me here. And so now I look back wow. at that time and I'm like, OK, thank you, God, for that one year of just protection yeah. over my like spirit yeah. and just giving me this like sense of bravery to move where mm -hmm. I really shouldn't have gone. Probably yeah. <laughs> like like I should have. Yeah. But I just I just did it knowing no one. And and it happened. And now I'm like, what? The fearlessness of youth. Just yes. like, yes. just astounds me. I'm like, we did things that now I'm like, I would never do that again. Like, that, why? I know it why. Shouldn't it shouldn't be I that, know. Way. that way. It, it doesn't should. have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. That's like a a part of me that I want to reaccess. Yeah, like totally. that fearlessness is something I actually do believe I'll get it again. Yeah. And that like bravery and courage yeah. in the face. I mean, you've been married for unknown. three weeks, so <laughs> yeah. you, you kind of had some changes going on. So yes. I think you have a little yes. time that's before true. you have to like jump back into fearlessness. Yes, that's true. I had breakfast with a friend this morning and she pretty directly said, do you think God tells you exactly what to do or do you think you have choices? Mm. So when y'all are mm -hmm. thinking about coming to New York, mm -hmm. was it your choice mm -hmm. or was it a directive or is it yeah. some amalgamation of them both? Like, what did you think when you came here? Oh, so good. What a good question. So good. I... I think it was a choice and I, it may not have even been a choice made for the right reasons, honestly, because yeah. I remember before I, I left here, I was like, is my heart just filled with selfish ambition and and my own goals? And wow. genuinely, I was like, yeah, <laughs> low key, <laughs> probably, you know what, probably. Is that what that is down there for sure. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It is. Yeah. And, I, and I remember like bringing that to the Lord and being like, God, I hate that this is in me, but it's so strong in me. And like. I cannot go like I cannot. And I saw it wise counsel. And I remember like kind of agonizing with some friends and being like, if my heart is, is selfish, should I not go? Like, cause I know it's in me. And I know there's also pure motives in me as well. Like I know there's a desire to like steward my gifts and potential well for the Lord and, yeah. and to just like be who I'm created to be, which is a words girl and a mm -hmm. books girl and like publishing girl and, or at the time. And so, yeah, we love that. Um, but also I, I sensed the selfishness as well. And I, I just kind of made the choice and I was yeah. like, Lord, please like re use this move and use the season of my life to sanctify me. And yeah. he did, he is like, and so that's my answer to that is like, it was an imperfect choice and it was not lost on me that I was not, it was not a super holy righteous choice. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you think? So what was real. your choice? Yeah. So 
I love that question because I do think there are times when um, the Lord says, there are a few choices, a few different paths you can go down. And I'm with you, whichever one you choose. When he's not actively saying no, I think we have this free will to make the choice. And then he's like, all right, we're going here and I'm with you. Um, I do feel like New York actually was an obvious yes because every other door is shut. Mm. Um, So I think I mentioned Boston earlier, but there was like a brief period that summer when I was applying where I was really fixated on Boston and had this cool opportunity for a job that I thought was going to work out. Found my roommates that I was going to live with there, like made plans to get a car there, all these things. I was like very sure. I was like, okay, Boston is where he's leading. And then it just slammed shut that, Mm. that door. Um, I also applied to a few jobs in Texas as little safeties. Those slammed shut. Mm. Um, And the same day I got the Boston rejection, I got the New York offer. And so it just felt, yeah. You're like, is it my choice? (laughs) Yeah. 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 And so, and it is weird when something, because prior to Boston, New York was really the dream. When I lived in Nashville for grad school, I had a picture of the Empire State Building framed above my bed. (laughs) It's like this. Mine's the flat iron. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that landmark. hits yeah. Uh, the landmarks that are iconic. Yeah. And it was just something I was like, one day this is this has to happen. Um, and so it, it had always been New York. So there are those sweet moments when your desire and, and a dream you have does align with God's yes. Yeah. And those are like magic. Yeah. <laughs> and so while it has been filled with, you know, times of selfish ambition and like my own like mistakes and anxiety and fear. I, I do have to remember New York was a yes from him. And so I'm so glad we're yeah. talking about this. Yeah, this <laughs> it's so good, good to, to be reminded on. in a cold winter where New York yeah. is hard to live in. Yeah. It was we're a yes. Here. Yes. It is true. Like he did open the doors for us. And like yeah. I'm even thinking too of like he opened like the job, like gave both of us kind of our dream jobs yeah. Yeah. Um, out of nowhere in a, in a city that that like doesn't happen. Like people come here every day mm-hmm. for, with the hope of that happening and it doesn't happen. And yeah. um, so it is amazing to see like, like, even though our hearts were in wherever the places they were in, like I think we both wanted to do the right thing mm-hmm. and we wanted him to lead us and he opened these doors and he's used it. So As, let's skip a few steps here. Are you yeah. working day jobs now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I was at Penguin Random House, left that this past summer, and now I work for Ad Age, which is a news outlet for the advertising industry. So cool. I am very much in the advertising industry. Yeah. Yes. Who She's knew? An ad girl. So sorry, I'm like girly. Away from your job today. No, it's oh, honestly it's please. Totally fine. It is amazing okay. to be here. <laughs> okay. It is amazing to be here. Um, but yeah, I felt like I needed to be in a job that was more suited to my giftings. Because even though I was in mm. publishing and it was great and I loved it, my actual day-to-day was, I wasn't, I was using like 30% of my capacity. And mm. I was like, this feels oh, like wow. not good stewardship of like yeah. who I am. So now I'm in a role in advertising that is I book uh, speakers for conferences. And oh, so it's cool. way more relational. I get to like, yeah, be more communicative. Yeah. And it's a good fit. So that's really cool. Yeah. Do you want to, yeah. can you tell us about your day job now? Yeah. So I still have the same one that oh. got me to New York seven Spartans. years later. Oh, yes. We eight. love it. Eight. Shout out. We love um, a little yes. perseverance. Yes. 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 We love that. Yeah. So okay. same job. Um, I love it. It's really just working with classic literature, which is just so fun. Like digging into Shakespeare and working with really smart writers who write about it well, smarter than me. Like I just, I just accept their manuscripts. Um, but it just really is a job that I do want to be grateful for because it got me to New York. Like it kind of was the ticket because I, I don't think I did say I was fearless. I wasn't fearless enough to move here without a job. I don't think yeah, I would have done know that. that. <laughs> uh, uh, you did. I was about to be like, wait, yeah. I don't think Elizabeth. <laughs> some people do. Yeah. This one. I told and myself so I'd give people it six do it. weeks. I was like, I will six weeks. I'm going to do everything in my power to get a job. And I'm either going to have a job or spend all my money trying there you go yeah <laughs> and it's gonna be worth it either way That's so right. and our parents are like oh I know. <laughs> we're like sobbing at home like oh, <laughs> oh. She's okay. yeah. i think it's so important for people to hear y'all where y'all are right now because the liturgies for wholeness is your second book out yes mm-hmm. liturgies for hope has done really well mm-hmm. and you are still choosing to have day jobs as well yeah. and yeah. so and this is also a job Yes. And so I think it's real. I think that's important for people to hear because I yeah. did the dumb thing of like, I'm going to write books. And my first advance was $7,000. Mm-hmm. And that's supposed to last you a year. Yeah. Right. Well, wow. there's right. no world where, and all of a sudden I was like, 
uh, we have a big problem. <laughs> you got to do more and than that. An installment. Yeah, yes. yeah. You get part of it when you ri- sign, and then yeah. you get part of it. Yeah, yeah. Way later. Yeah. And yes. you, and there's taxes, and there's exactly. an agent, and, and which yes. there should be, and and so totally. yes. All of a sudden, you have four thousand dollars to yeah, last a exactly. year. Yes. yes. Huh. Math thing. Yes. Math like says, I know I'm a words girl, but I have a problem. Right. Yeah. 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 We have a problem here. Hi, friends. Just interrupting this conversation to tell you about one of our amazing partners, Shopify. Think about this for a second. If you put 10 seconds on the clock, how many things can you name that are always growing? Okay, are you ready? Uh, Your relationships, your skills, but also how about your business on Shopify? Because it could be. I hope you know Shopify is the best tool to help you get your business off the ground. When you feel like you're really good at the creation and vision side, but don't know how to get it all executed, Shopify can help. They have built in tools that help you create, execute, and analyze your sales. They are the commerce platform behind ShopAnnieFDowns.com, and it has been so easy to use and get you the merch that you love. You don't need to know how to code or how to graphic design or any of that. Just bring your best ideas, and Shopify will help you open up your shop, no matter what you're selling, they have got you covered. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and an in-person POS system, so you're all set. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash sounds fun, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash sounds fun right now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash sounds fun. Okay, now back to our conversation with Audrey and Elizabeth. Okay, so now tell me, how did y'all start, get to where you were writing liturgies yeah. together? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Liturgies yeah. are really hard to write, by the way. Liturgies are. I yes. honor y'all so much oh, for Oh my gosh, thank well, you. It was, so it was Audrey's work. idea, so I'll yes. let you Okay, I'll kick, kick it off, it off yeah. the story. Yeah. So, yes, so we, we just shared our story. We moved to New York, not too long before the pandemic. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we were solidly living here when Mm -hmm. it became the epicenter of the pandemic as it was known internationally, which is just a very scary phrase attached to the city you live in. Was it scary? It was so scary. It was dystopian. It was, was, um, you know, it's like known to be the city that never sleeps. All of a sudden it's sleeping. It's dead. It's like a ghost town. And so I actually quarantined in Texas for a few months. I left. It just became it just became really scary. And I know that's a privilege. And I was so lucky to be able to do that. But my roommate left and I was like, I'm alone. (laughs) I'm, I'm like truly alone in this scary dystopian, like feeling place. Um, And there was just sirens all day, all night, Mm -hmm. you know, people are in such close contact in this dense city that people are getting sick left and right. And so when I was on my way in the plane to Texas to quarantine, I actually just felt like this, this random idea of like, what if we, Elizabeth and I, she was the first person that came to mind as honor. my most trusted deeply, writer friend. Like, what if Elizabeth and I wrote something for our church, Church of the City, New York, mm-hmm. just something like a handlebar to hold on to in this desperate time? Mm-hmm. And not because we thought we had the answers, but because we... I needed to write my own prayers and to be like near God so badly because there was just so many unknowns. I didn't know I was good when I was going to be coming back to New York. Like I bought a one way ticket. Right. um, And people were just struggling. And actually, our pastor, John Tyson, said now during this time is when a lot of people are going going to be consuming a lot of bad information. And so. I was like, well, what sort of hopeful words could we put out there, Um, even just for our church? Mm -hmm. So I texted you on the plane that had Wi-Fi. And I was like, hey, girl, what would you think of writing a bunch of prayers for our church and and seeing if they would put them in the newsletter? Like, that was as far as we dreamed. Like, what if we wrote a prayer for those worried for their physical health? Because that was the number one concern. People who are feeling stuck, people who are far from their loved ones, Mm -hmm. different things like that. And so Mm -hmm. Elizabeth was game. Thank you, God. Yep. And we spent one weekend filled with desperation, yeah. just oh my writing gosh, just these prayers. Awesome. Weekend. Google, um, Google Docs. Google Docs. Docs. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Doc story is wow. the, like the placeholder title I put in our original Google Doc was Liturgies for Hope. Like I oh genuinely gosh, was not yeah. even like thinking you were writing not a even, book. Not even thinking. Yeah. And I was like, this is such a 
like we weird didn't... obscure title. I was like, this is not it. Yeah. We didn't even like the name. I didn't even like it. I was like, but hope feels like right. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And then we're we like I remember we like you know we're talking to our editor about the book title and we're like, well, it's definitely not liturgies for hope. But like, here's kind of where we started. She was like, no, that's the title. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> if you say yeah, so, no, she yeah. really believed in it. So. Yeah. How did y'all did y'all sign two book originally? Was it always a two yes. book deal? Okay, yeah. it was always a two book deal. Okay, which was more than we. Yeah, I mean, I mean the yeah. whole story that it got yeah. picked up is insane. I know. Like, yeah. say okay, so the story is cool. So we so we wrote eleven liturgies originally, give them to our church, and we had this budding creative community mm-hmm. at the time that's now like thriving. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I've seen stuff community. About it online, oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. Um, but at the time it was just called the creative team, and they were really encouraging us to use our creative giftings to serve the church because that's kind of a gap in like church service organizations, there's like the greeting team and like the children's ministry and all those are so important. And the worship team. The worship team. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that that, there's nothing usually, or there wasn't for us, like a team beyond the worship team where like creatives could use their gifts and like Mm -hmm. bless the church with their gifts. So we were just kind of like charged with like, be creative, like whatever you're good at doing, maybe make something for your community and Mm -hmm. like add beauty, add whatever. And so we were like, okay, we write. And so this, I think Audrey, that was kind of what sparked Mm -hmm. Audrey's idea. So we wrote these liturgies, gave, them to our creative team director at the time was like can you use these she was like absolutely punted them off to a website like a software developer website designer and to a like a graphic designer um a ux designer um and they built a website for them created a font to go on like it was Beyond, we were like, real. Uh, like, we were like what? we thought like newsletter, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought y'all would cut comic and paste Sans this font. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh, genuinely? comic Sans. <laughs> I'm like, it was a dark time. <laughs> a dark yeah, time for like, dark that season. was our greatest. So we're hope. like, yeah. oh, you're. And so when we were told like, oh, we want to create a website for these, we're like, oh, that's literally so cool. And then John Tyson, our pastor, got word of it, and he was like, let's launch the website on Easter Sunday. We were like, even cooler, like, yeah. cool down. And so that was the idea. They did launch on Easter Sunday. They got shared fairly widely on social media, I think. Um, and then as legend has it, um, a pastor in London, King's Cross Church, um, what's his name? Pete Hughes. Yes. Pete Hughes. Read one of the liturgies aloud to his congregation. Oh. And there was an editor, a British editor in the congregation who heard the liturgy mm-hmm. and was like, these need to be a book. She reached out to us or she reached out to Church of the City and was like, can I be put in touch with the authors of Liturgies for Hope? And so we got in touch Lord. with her and she was like, have you ever considered these being a book? And like, and there's part of us that was squealing, freaking out, like, no, we could never comprehend this being a book. That's too cool. And then there's my like, I work in publishing side and I'm like, that's, it's never going to happen. Like, yeah. I'm like, it's so hard to get a book deal. Like, thanks. That's such a fun idea. Like, no, we haven't considered it. But like, thank you. And she really like, championed us to Mm -hmm. try to get a book deal so she we tried to get a deal in the UK first and then those doors were closing and so she was like maybe try to get a a book deal in the US and then I'll buy the UK rights and that's why I was like so easy that's where I was like thanks thank you for this this has already been adorable and so fun oh my gosh it's been adorable Um, this has been an adorable time with you (laughs) one does not simply get a book deal in the US so I was like (laughs) she's like just get an agent and you're good we kind of laughed it off but she kept pestering in in the best way we love her her name's Elizabeth Neep she's our Love. girl um but she was like how's it going in the u.s and he like leads and wow. we were like no yeah um and so then honestly just to kind of like say we did something i emailed a friend of mine who was an editor at convergent at the time which yeah. is another imprint yeah. at uh, waterbrook and i was like hey like we've got this book idea that like an editor in the uk is interested in but we need to be agented in the u.s like do you know any agents who'd be interested in representing this and she was like yes immediately yes she she gave us three names connected us with three different agents we took meetings with three agents all in the same week. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, it was yeah. crazy. Like, we were like, what is happening? Yeah, yes, serious. Yes. Yes. Which yes. agent did you pick? Do you... Chris Park oh, at DeFiori. Of course. Yes, we yeah. love her. Oh, Mama mom. Chris. Yes, she's, well done. She nurtured mom. this into the world. Yeah. She absolutely did. Yeah. So that, and that's from there, the rest is history. Like, Chris took it from there and mm-hmm. uh, sold it to Waterbrook. And two big deal. Why Truly s- wild. Why 60 prayers in each of them? We were told. <laughs> oh, it might have been one of those things. I mean, I didn't know if there was a, I didn't yeah. know if it mattered to you. I don't think so. I think that yeah. was like a good book length. Yeah. Um, I think it is interesting, though, because, you know, being told you need to write 60 prayers after yeah. we had written 11. Yeah. We're like, that's a lot more. Yeah. But then we started brainstorming topics, yeah. and there were so many left on the cutting floor. So yeah. many. Like the Even amount after of these prayers. 120. Oh, yes. There's so many that yes. were cut, which is so sad. Right. We wanted to write yes. all of them. Build a we website. We have a graveyard. Oh, start over. Keep going. Document. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Graveyard. Yes. graveyard. Which is a so little sad. macabre. But, <laughs> yeah, I like um, it, though. Liturgy graveyard. The liturgy graveyard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What, tell me. I'm sorry. I just looked, and I couldn't see because I'm not smart enough. Um, liturgies <laughs> for Hope released when? Oh, November 1st? 
2022. Yes. 22. Yes. So then yes. liturgies for wholeness yes. that came out last week yes. is, so what is that? 18 months in between? About, yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. So were you already, this one, Liturgies for Hope is coming into the world. People are yes. experiencing it. They've already had the 11. Now they're having the 60. Oh, right. And my guess is, correct me if I'm wrong, my guess is you are already <laughs> writing these 60 <laughs> yeah. before people are even giving you full feedback on the yes. first 60. Yes. That's, right. That's so scary. Yes. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. And it was, thankfully, it was a little bit blended. Like I remember starting Liturgies for Wholeness. The summer before Liturgies for Hope came out. So oh my gosh, to, before. Yeah, the summer before. Because mm-hmm. it was due. This is crazy, Annie. Our manuscript for Liturgies for Wholeness was due in January. And the book came out in November. And you know how crazy book launch season is. It's like the month. And then That's even impossible. the month beyond. We went to the UK in January to launch um, the book in there in, in London. Mm-hmm. And so, oh. yeah. So, we're so working. she did pick it up? She did. Oh, yes. she did. Oh, yes, she UK did. Right. Full circle. What she picked dream. up the UK rights. It's yeah. in the UK as well. Um, and so we were like launching a book and writing a book. Mm-hmm. All at the same time, um, brutal. which was brutal, but it yeah. was it was cool. It was yeah. good. It was a good challenge, and we had each other, which oh, is yeah. just one of our favorite things to talk about. We're <laughs> yeah. holding hands right now. Yes, yes. For, for people as not I reach watching for her hand, in the hand <laughs> grasp. Um, just you know, first book like published book um, traditionally together you learn so much you know like the ups and downs and the just the admin tasks related to releasing a book being able to do it together and navigate those paths together I now am like totally ruined if I ever do it alone (laughs) because also just like it's not only dividing the stress but it's also multiplying the joy that's what we say wow because you publish the book and you have someone to high five that day like it's it's something you're sharing together you people outside this don't realize that launch day is like so anti You just watch yeah. Amazon. <laughs> right. Right like, now. Yes. I mean, like, you might have that. a fun dinner with your family. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. But nothing yeah. big happens. It just, yeah. It's just yeah. available to it's buy. It's just available. It. Yeah. It's, out. it's kind of like your yeah. work of like hustling the pre-sale. Totally. Is done. Right. So you're like, yes. right. did you buy it? Yeah. Yes. So now. <laughs> I've, right. And, and then are people, are, people are reading <laughs> it. So yeah, that's when you start to get feedback and. But yeah, it's not immediate. I mean, it's so sweet. Yeah. That, I mean, even when we walked into Hepzibah House, Penny, who runs, I love Penny and Andy yes, so much. We love Penny. Penny literally stops you and says, "Yeah." Th- and every room in this house is a copy of your book. It's it's very amazing. special. I mean, that is uh, it's so cool. Is there? I've never written anything like a liturgy publicly. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've written one privately. That's not like me side <laughs> saying something. I no, haven't written saying. anything like this. <laughs> Tell me about the weight it feels that you are teaching people how to pray you are guiding them in prayer yeah does it feel weighty or no maybe it doesn't yeah I don't know I'm curious to hear what you say about that Audrey I feel like it sometimes it feels weighty mostly it feels freeing because I think our vision is we want to like encourage people to be honest with God so Mm -hmm. I think in my view I'm not like here are the words that must be prayed for this thing Uh. um it's like here is an example of genuinely crying out to God in like modern day language and being very real about how you're feeling, being very real about how you're experiencing something. Um, and then looking to scripture, seeing like, what does God say about this? What do people in the Bible say about this? Listening, quieting our hearts, mm-hmm. listening for the Lord saying, God, like, what do you want to say about this? What do you wish we would say to you about this? Like we did a lot of time and spent a lot of time in scripture and in prayer, just like listening. Um, and then wrote it down. So I don't, I don't think the, in my opinion, the liturgy is not like the prayer, um, uh, but it is like an example of like, if you don't have mm-hmm. the words for when you're afraid for your physical health or for when you're like a f- having trouble falling asleep, here's a guide, like here's an example. But like our hope is that people would take the liturgies and then make their own. And then like, just kind of get an, a, an idea of like, oh, I can be actually so honest with God. Like I can mm-hmm. actually be angry with him or I can mm-hmm. actually be so sad or I can actually feel hopeless and tell him that I feel hopeless yeah. in this book, Liturgies for Home. Um, but then I can turn to scripture and find find hope, comfort, a promise, even if the feelings aren't aligning in the moment. Um, mm-hmm. so that is the gift my, of liturgy yeah. so much to me is no matter what I feel, yes. the words are already there. Yes. Yeah. So totally. if, yes. I, if totally. I am in a space where I don't know, I don't know what to say about this Lord. Yeah. I, usually yes. I can find between the 120, mm-hmm. I can find one that says, <laughs> this is what yeah. I'm trying to say. So yeah. let me just say this. I think that's a lot of freedom. Yeah. 
Elizabeth, because I'm afraid sometimes people think liturgies are, if I don't say this word for word, the prayer mm-hmm. will not work. Oh, yeah. It's not, not magic. True. No Say formula. that. Yes. Yeah, talk not about a magic that. Because it feels like yeah. it sometimes mm-hmm. in prayer. Mm-hmm. Which totally it does. Yeah, we've always said we've never meant to replace anyone's prayers. Yeah. Our greatest hope is that maybe it inspires someone's prayers or just even if it just helps someone sit in the presence of God and say help or thank you or I think Anne Lamott has a book called Help Thanks Wow, yeah, which are three, yeah. you know, words or phrases that if that's what your prayer is, that's a prayer. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like in Liturgies for Hope, I would say half the liturgies I wrote were for me. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were never meant to be someone's word for word devotional time. Yeah. It was really written from my own experiences and and words to either things I needed in the moment or things I had experienced. And it's not all this lofty, serious stuff. Like we have one that's called a liturgy for feeling butterflies around someone, which is about a crush. And like God wants to know about it. He already does. But like if you are sitting in the swirls and don't know exactly how to process, we've all been there. It's like a thing. Then this is some stuff I felt and wanted to talk to God about. Um, I love that Liturgies for Wholeness has for when you're browsing through a live uh, a, a museum, museum. Yeah, I'm, like, oh, I'm gonna take one. it with me to the Met I can't yes, wait do it I so uh, can't wait. I love that one I wrote that one in a couple of museums actually just to get inspiration yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just think that to think the overarching statement you're making in Liturgies for Wholeness that is new out but also in Liturgies for Hope is this like everywhere you are God could be with you if you want I mean he is yes. there but oh, yes. he could be with you exactly. if you want him to be with yes. you in this whether yes. it's the crush or a museum totally I like yeah. both in New York City We're I would take either both. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. down for both <laughs> down to have a crush that's anyway. right that's right it's yeah. inviting but it's you're right. really inviting. sweet yeah Bring him into washing the dishes we don't have yes. allergy for that but we do have one yes. for grocery shopping yeah. and napping like yeah. he yeah. can so be present in that um, and it's about being aware of his presence too. Yeah. And yeah, and you know, scripture is, you know, meant to be repeated. And so like our our greatest goal was to take each line and be able to point back to scripture. I love that. I love how at the end of a lot of them, if not all of them, I think all of them, all of you them. put the scriptures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So then when you're doing it, like a liturgy for a new parent, and then it's like, okay, here are the f- verses you should, if, yes. if you need to keep going. <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely. Like those are the scriptures we yeah. look to for inspiration. Yeah. We hope people read those on their own and yeah. like and the and the, the Lord will like speak to us in our in our own way, in the way between us. Like mm. he'll speak one on one through scripture. My hope today is that everybody who I bet a bunch of my friends already have liturgies for hope and mm-hmm. they're just gonna get liturgies for wholeness. But if they get both today, if they're like, Oh my gosh, new friends, duh, yes. we need all of this get in both. our house. Um, what's the difference? Yeah, good, good question, question, you guys. Well, my dad loves when people different. say that. So, <laughs> yes, different. Um, yeah, the co- the cover. The, I mean, <laughs> the, the, the color of the cover. They go together beautifully. By <laughs> they, the way, oh, thank you. Yellow and a tangerine. Yeah. Um, thank you to our designers. Yeah, Absolutely. they did a beautiful um, job. Yeah. Yeah. So I can take a stab at this. Take a stab, and um, I can follow up. Yeah, yeah. So liturgies for hope was written very specifically, or the origin was written in the middle of the pandemic, and so it really was centered on. We feel suffering in these areas, but we need hope. Yeah. We feel hopeless. We need something to grasp onto, yeah. some sort of anchor. Um, and then liturgies for wholeness, we started thinking less about like specifically suffering and more about all the different ways we are a human being, mm-hmm. the good and the bad and the in-between, and all the ways we live in communities filled with wow. human beings. And where are those areas where we all want to move toward wholeness, toward mm-hmm. fullness, where do we need to heal or where do we just need to invite God in so that we're experiencing the fullness of Christ? Mm-hmm. And so Liturgies for Wholeness is divided into eight or nine, eight. eight sections. Yeah. So we I have- I back you up. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can count. Let, let me, me know. Pages. Oh, it's Roman numerals, y'all. Uh-oh. Well, eight, eight, I can do it. Eight. Eight. It's eight. Okay, eight. officially okay. eight. Wow. Um, and so there's prayers for the mind, for the body, for the senses, for the yeah. heart, for the soul, for the home, for the community, mm-hmm. and for One the more. world. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. She got it. We got oh, it. We got it. And you know, have those memorized yeah. for launch season. Yeah. Um, but really, like, the first, I guess, five encompass the individual. So yeah. mm-hmm. the mind, um, the heart, that's that's what you experience on a day-to-day basis or different seasons when maybe there's something that's broken, but you're a holistic person. And so we do believe that God wants to move us and like heal whatever we're going through. Like we have a liturgy yeah. for anger. I think that's mm-hmm. in the heart yeah. section or the soul section. Yeah. 
we want to move from living in anger into living in forgiveness and freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like that journey. And, and we hope a person, whatever point they're at on that journey from brokenness to wholeness or somewhere in between can find something yeah. in, in the book. Um, and then the last three for the home, for the community and for the world are about those things we're, we're not alone. We're not just individuals marching yeah. around, just living our own lives. Like yeah. who we're with, the neighborhood we live in affects us. What we read in the news affects us. So mm-hmm. we have a liturgy for when you move to a new neighborhood. Yeah. We have a liturgy for when you feel overwhelmed by the news, mm-hmm. a liturgy for voting, right. which Elizabeth mm-hmm. wrote, which is mm-hmm. very, <laughs> very apt for 2024. Yeah. Um, Did y'all, so, yeah. We don't know who wrote what, though. No, no we, only we do. Yeah. So y'all, <laughs> moms, we know. our moms can't even tell. Yeah. So y'all each no. write full ones, and yes. then do you kind of read over each other? Mm-hmm. Is that what you yes. can go? Oh, I yeah. think I'd say small instead of tiny here. Totally. That kind yes. of thing. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's so. Really we each sweet. wrote half of the liturgies. Yeah. Our writing styles, I and mean, we knew this from the beginning, from twenty twenty. Our, our writing styles are very similar, mm-hmm. um, so they integrate really well. But yeah, we each wrote half. Do you put then, any yeah. of them in front of like your writers group? Do, are you testing with anybody? So, yes. Yeah, um, I'd say specifically for the topic that neither one of us have experienced personally. So in the in Liturgies for Hope, there's um, like a, a liturgy for those who have been hurt by the church, mm-hmm. um, which I know is a very real experience for many people that I haven't personally walked through to the degree that I know a lot of people have. So I ran that liturgy by a few people who I know have been through that. Yeah. Um, in the new book, there's a liturgy for a new parent. And yeah. I'm not a parent. So yeah. Yeah. I ran that by my brother and like, sister-in-law. Right on these diapers? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yeah. what does Do a new parent diapers? feel like? Like, yeah, what yeah, do you yeah, need? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So for for content that I'm not personally experiencing, mm-hmm. I will definitely put in front of yeah. someone else first. Yeah. That's really sweet. Mm-hmm. Who do you hope – who is this for? Who do you hope mm-hmm. reads this and yeah. prays these? Yeah. I mean, is it cheating to say everyone? Yeah. <laughs> I would say, okay, here's who I hope reads it. I hope my, both of us, I think we've talked about this, like we, our greatest joy is when we hear a story of someone being like, I have never prayed a day in my life or I Uh, have like thought about praying, but never really thought that I could or like I've dabbled and and then I gave it up and now I'm wanting to come back and, um, and then I picked up your book and I've Mm -hmm. found words to communicate with God. That's who I want to pick it up. And of course I want everyone to pick it up. Like people with like thriving prayer lives. Pick it up too. Love that. Sure. So, so good. Um, but it's the best when someone is like, I'm connecting with God for the first time or the first time in a long time. This is my this. favorite time of year to talk about books like this because we're in the middle of Lent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And every mom is putting things in an Easter basket. And I'm yeah. like, let me tell you a handful of things that might be great in an Easter yeah. basket or to mail like yes. to your college daughter yeah. or son. These are totally, they're yeah. not feminine yep. necessarily besides mm-hmm. written by women, but men can mm-hmm. read. Women. Yeah, totally. We love so, stories hey, from men. men. Men can, can read, read women. women. That is yes. part of That's truth. who I was going to say is I hope reads it. Men. Men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope men. so too. I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. Um, because there are men writing liturgies that men and women are doing. Totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There should be women writing liturgies that men and women are praying along with. Yeah. Um, so I think Easter baskets, I think like college graduation, yeah. I think so all that good. kind of stuff. All good yes. events. Hey, friends, just interrupting this conversation one more time to share about one of our amazing partners, ZocDoc. Listen, we all know there are things in life that you have to compromise on. And sometimes when it comes to your health, there is no compromise. Okay, so don't go back to that one doctor who uses your appointment to catch up on their family group chat or just because they're available right now. Listen, instead, check out ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable, listen to you, and prioritize your health. And you can search by location, availability, and insurance. So literally no compromises here because with ZocDoc, you've got more options than you know. ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients. So go to ZocDoc.com slash that sounds fun and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash that sounds fun. ZocDoc.com slash that sounds fun. And remember that link and pretty much every other link you could ever hope for in the world from us are in the show notes below or we'll send it to you every Friday. Friday and Friday's AFD week in review email. You can sign up to get that in the show notes below as well. And now back to finish up our conversation with Audrey and Elizabeth. What 
does the rest of your writing life look like? Are y'all writing on something every day? Oh, oh man, that's okay. That's so a, kind of you to assume. Yeah. I have that discipline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nor I. I feel like we both have our own things that we're yes. dabbling in. Yeah. Um, I just personally, I do make it a practice. I try to to write weekly. Yeah. Um, so I started this practice right after college, actually writing 800 words a week just for myself, and it can be anything kind of similar to like morning pages. Um, if you're part of the artist, you do it all play. in one sit. I do, do a one sitting. I do 800. I try to. Um. And that's genuinely just to keep the faucet on, like to yeah. keep words flowing, to kind of generate ideas that are maybe in my brain I'm not aware of. Um, but the only regular writing that I'm doing at the moment, and I would love to do this more, um, is for Unfortunately I Love You, the poetry collective yeah. that we're a part of. Mm -hmm. We have a weekly substack that's released every Friday, and there's six members of the group. So every six weeks is we everyone contribute. Here? Everyone's in New York. In New York. Yeah. yeah, everyone's in New York. Um, so every six weeks I contribute, or each one of us contributes a substack. So it can either be a poem, it can be a an essay um and then and then for the events that we do we have an event coming up in a couple of weeks or actually i think when this podcast comes out it'll be over oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. it'll be over but um we've done three and this will be our fourth okay. and so we're audrey and i are currently writing for that yeah, yeah. we're working on our stuff yeah wow. yeah that's really fun. yes yeah i feel like i'm in my poet girl era yeah where i'm returning to my roots i really grew to love I've always loved writing since I was out of the womb, but I really grew to love writing in college. And just, you know, in your college English classes, yeah. you're introduced to a whole plethora of authors. And I was just so enamored by the old poets like Wordsworth, who wrote with meter and rhyme and iambic pentameter. And it was like this beautiful structure and boundary that you could be creative within and something about the limits felt so freeing to me like wow. this line has to have 10 beats yeah. so you have to be so particular about your choices and really yeah. believe in the words you choose mm -hmm. and so I'm starting to return to that again where I'm trying to write sonnets and like put words to these like new words to these old structures um and not even to like publish out in the world just for my own self like processing whatever I'm going through or whatever I'm feeling into a little sonnet form or a haiku even, which is way easier to write because it's three lines yeah. is so cool. Like yeah. it's just so fun for me. And I've even started like making it a spiritual discipline where I'll write something to God, like in the old form of the love poems, like yeah. John Donne, you know, batter my heart, three person God. Like he yeah. just, I feel like the old poets had a way they just yeah, had a way of crying out way. to God like a lover. Yeah. And yeah, just accessing that part of God as a lover yeah. through poetry is so really cool right now. Wow. But no one's going to ever see those, I don't think. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Famous last words. Yeah, we're both <laughs> like, like uh, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see stuff. how that goes. No. Um, I write really differently in the city than I write oh. in Nashville. Wow, you all write differently here than you do no. other places. Can you feel New York affecting your writing? Yeah. Wow. I know it's been a long yeah. time for y'all, so that may not yeah. be quite as. I no. think the thing that I, that for me is that I, I write in a different place. So I think for the first like year or so, year, two years I lived in New York, I felt like I was writing differently because New York was still so novel to me. And now New York, there are times definitely when I, if I'm like putting myself in a really artistic environment in the city that it can spark something new and it can feel different. But now New York is my day to day. Yeah. And so mm. I, I really, the last time I really felt writing differently was when I was in London or when I was yeah. in like Miami, you know, when I'm traveling now, like when I'm in a different place, um, giving myself a different perspective. Cause, Cause now you have a house, like you have a home, all I your stuff is here. here. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's hard for writing to feel different yeah. in New York because yeah. it is, it's day to day, mm. but I'm sure it has affected me. I yeah. Sure it. I feel like New York has more free, beautiful public places to yeah, write with inspiration, yeah. like Central Park on a bench, yeah, right. on a beautiful Sunday. Right, right. I can't right. take that for granted. I think I'm like, I don't know. It's just normal now. I'm like, it should never no, be normal. I get it. <laughs> I'm like, so cool. Hotel lobbies, I feel yeah. like, are the that is the secret, secret. Yes. Yeah. that people do not know. Yes, oh. these like gorgeous, gorgeous hotel lobbies. Absolutely. You don't have to be staying there. You don't, you don't have, have to, to know. be paying for free. I don't know. <laughs> they don't, don't know. know. And you know what? We don't need Wi-Fi because yeah. I'm trying to write anyway. So yeah. don't give me your yes. password. Totally. I do not care. Yes. I need it. Yeah. Has it affected your writing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll be curious to see as this year goes on yeah. if it gets less yeah. novel. But every, I mean, I've written a portion of every book here. Mm. I write wow. better here. Yeah. So oh, I've never yes. written a whole book here until yeah. this one that I'm writing this year. Yeah. And so, and I won't, I mean, I'll write some in Nashville too, but this one is really like 
started here. This one is mm-hmm. based yeah. here with writing in Nashville. And most of my books are based in Nashville with writing in New York. Cool. Does that okay. make sense? Oh, yeah. Totally. Totally. So I will be curious. Yeah. I'm the same. Now that I have like a place where my stuff is, yeah. Yeah, is it going to be less? Yeah. yeah. Something. Sparkly. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. yeah. Or is this... Or is well not because it's still yeah. so new to me, and yeah. I'm not here full time. Right, exactly. And so I'm ba- I'm novel. dual citizen, as we say. Preserve the novelty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah that's I'm the thing to... about writing. It's it's impossible to nail down or predict when you'll be inspired. Like, that's right. Yeah. It could be a grocery store run that will like spark an idea, and then you have a chapter written. Yes, so it really is right. like. Writing is so elusive. No. That's why I guess discipline is recommended. Oh, man. I, one of my favorite <laughs> yes. quotes is I heard a guy, I mean, this was probably in 15 years ago, at least, if not more, at a writer's conference say, um, I only write when I'm inspired, but I get inspired every morning at 9 a.m. <gasps> wow. Wait a was second. Like, he was like, he every said, morning at 9 a.m. that tattooed on my arm. Choose right. inspiration. I choose. He I was like, find I, it. this is my job. Yeah. Like, totally. I, I don't, yeah. dentists don't wait until they're like, you know what? Oh. I I feel like cleaning teeth today. Exactly. <laughs> Here I go. You know, and that, and the same is true yeah. for the three of us. Like a portion of your job yeah. and a portion of my job yes. is producing written word. And it so is. if I just wait for inspiration, yeah, then I hope my publisher's fine that it co- the book comes in six years to them. Yeah, totally. yeah. That's, that's not gonna always happen. feel yeah. that. Way. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's part of writing in communion with God. Is like part of it is writing in faith is showing up and being like, God, I yeah. trust you're going to meet me at nine a.m. when yeah. I may or may not feel inspiration, but you know what, you're going to be with me. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. And yeah. like I'm. I'm going to write something and I'm going to try to listen for your spirit and it's going to feel different every day, maybe. Yeah. But like whatever I write, I'm going to just trust that that was yeah. what was meant to be written today. Yeah, that's right. And 400 yeah. of those 800 words may yeah. not matter at all. Ex- oh, the yeah. other many of them. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. When I'm trying, because I'm, I'm the same way. I do word count. I don't do hours. Mm-hmm. Nice. Because um, I can sit there for two hours and do nothing. Exactly. Totally. That won't yeah. really get us anywhere. No, Annie's brain does yeah. not respond to that particular <laughs> yeah. carrot on a stick. The yeah. carrot on a stick is, same. you got to do a thousand words today. Totally. And then you can get up. You can do whatever you want. Totally. But I mean, those yeah. last 200 can be like, so for lunch, I'm going to make. Absolutely. <laughs> And then yeah. tomorrow yeah. I'll delete those two hundred totally. and pick up right there. Yeah, yeah keep going. Yes. totally. But you've got to yes. keep it flowing. You've you do. got to keep it moving. Do y'all see yourselves on. writing nonfiction essay kind of books mm-hmm. at some point? That's our hope for yeah. our next book, which yes. is yes. TBD. Yeah, but, but we would love to write a book of essays next. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. we would love to explore that form because the liturgies are more like poetry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, they're not prose. I mean, they don't rhyme or have you know any of. But they are those. Prose. These are a lot prose. harder. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, delving into the essay space would be new territory oh. for us. But I think it would also feel familiar. Yeah. Because so. a lot of yeah. the like writing I do for fun is also trying to explore things in an essay. Essays, yeah. Matt. And I started with essays, and yeah, I feel like did. like liturgies was kind of started a, with blog posts. I started with my yes. writer's blog, yeah, girl, I of which Audrey was too. one of the three followers. <laughs> I love um, it. But I love it, and I still I love it so much. I know the blogging days. Blogging was so yeah, good because so you saw so many people's long form day. Yeah, yes. yes. And then Google yes. Reader died. Uh, the blogging world. It yeah, did. So in attention spans. I know. But yeah, but we're, we're curious to dabble in Substack, which is, yeah. I feel like, the like today's kind of Are y'all doing that or just with the... Um, Unfortunately, Unfortunately I, love I love you. you. Yeah, we are not yet. Okay. But we are actively about to. Okay. <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay, great. Yes. Tell um, us when. We want to. I don't know when, but yes. we want to. But yes, when you do. Year. When oh, we do. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, I I was, that's so bossy of me. Tell us, Elizabeth, when. No, I just when. Like, when you do. When, tell yes. Me, and I'll tell, I'll tell you when. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yes. we would love to launch a Substack or, or write on a Substack exploring friendship. Yeah. Um, that's the topic. That is the topic that we are so passionate about that yes. we've seen just be so fruitful in our lives. Yes. That has just blessed us. And can feel so hard. Yes, it can yeah. feel so Our working hard. title is Soulmates, actually, because, mm. you know, there's so much emphasis placed on dating, yeah. marriage, relationships as being the soul fulfillers. Yeah. But in reality, I feel like, and I'm saying this as having just been married, yeah. like, I do feel like my friends are my soulmates. Yeah. And my husband yeah. is my friend, too. So yeah, it's like, course. he's counted in that. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, he's a soulmate, But, too. like, I heard this once that when the word in the Bible that can roughly translate to soulmate is used, it's only in regards to friendship. Wow. And so... That just is true. And I feel like New York has really been a sweet place because it is hard to live here. And, you know, honeymoon phase, you know, we're going to protect that. We're going to protect the golden glow as long as we can. Listen, I did have to trudge. I do have a fourth floor, no elevator walk up. I'm having my You you are being initiated. Oh, listen, that's tough. (laughs) Every package that arrives, I'm like, are you sure? 
Yes. Are you sure? sure you meant to order that? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, I have to go pick Grocery up a shopping. Automi- uh, yeah. I'm no. Oh, bless. There's it. a lot that's terrible sometimes, yeah. but yeah. Yes. you're feeling yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but it, it is honeymoon. Things. I will be the first to say yeah. I, it has not snowed on me. Yeah. So I am aware. Yeah. 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 The snow is lovely, and then it, it melts into dirty. Miles. Yeah, that's yeah. when you're like, it's what? So cold. And you still <laughs> yeah. have to like go to a thing. Yes, yeah. you still have to make yeah. your way with your grocery bags yes. and both right, arms right, right. And no yeah. car. Um, but yeah, all that to say, friendship in the city has really just been a lifeline. And yeah. in 2018, about a year after I had been living here, I went through a really bad year of anxiety and just mm-hmm. panic attacks that seemed to have no root cause. It it just was like a maelstrom. Um, and it was friends. It was friends who got me through. Yeah. And without friendship, you know, in the darkest times and also friendship in the lightest times when you're celebrating after really hard valleys. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, that's what makes life just so beautiful. Exactly. And yeah. and we're just really excited to write about it and explore yeah. friendship from like, yeah, the same sort of a perspective that gets applied to marriage, yeah. like exploring friendship through our writing in that way. Yeah, like covenant friendship and that yes. kind of thing where it's like, yeah, where we commit to each other. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we're, we're excited to explain. I, I've yeah. talked about this before, but the most painful breakup of my life mm. was a friendship. It was a friendship. Yeah. And I've had some some pretty yeah. bad breakups. Like yeah. I've had some pretty yeah. rough right. breakups. Yeah. But a friendship Nothing one. like a friendship. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You can't, I can't even light a candle wow. to the friendship yeah. breakup mm. pain yeah. Uh, yeah. with romantic breakups. And I think part of it is there is this, commitment you make to your best friends yeah. whether you say it or yeah. not there is a yeah, there is we don't ever have to break up yeah we're, gonna, right. we're doing right. this forever exactly and then you aren't yeah yeah and you're like, you're like what? oh what wait yeah. what? I didn't plan for that yeah yes. yeah i think it's yes. there's so so much uniqueness to calling friendships as important as they are mm-hmm. yeah um, mm-hmm. and allowing people i mean it's what you are doing with when you do soulmates it's yeah. allowing people to go like this friendship is very important to me. It is yeah. not romantic, but totally. it is a it fills yeah. a totally different place in my life. Yeah. It is really important. Yeah, yes. absolutely. It takes so much pressure off your romantic partner. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. Like they, yeah. they can't fulfill every bucket. They right. literally yeah. cannot. Totally. They just can't. <laughs> no. And and your mom can't. Like you that's you need right. so many different people in your life. And yeah. thank God for that. Yeah. yeah that's thank right. God that we can't be satisfied by a single person. Yeah. Well, Except thank, for him. Yeah, that's right. And even <laughs> him, my if church the Lord answer. meant for us to only love him, yeah. we would he wouldn't have only made one of us. There yeah. we wouldn't have been in a community. He, yes. he knew, So too. true. This is what yeah, he wants so for true. us, too. Yes. And so I think that's beautiful. And I don't know a lot of people who can write books together and still be friends. <laughs> it's been amazing. Yeah. It's been so good. People are like, how's it going? Like, yeah, is, totally. is everything okay? Blink. And we're like, yeah. and genuinely, I'm like, literally, it's gets better. Like it yeah. just every step al- along the way has gotten better. And I feel like I've had checked in with Audrey. I'm like, is this as fun for you as it is for me? Cause I'm, I'm doing great. And so yeah. if I'm a terrible partner, you have to just tell me because, no, yeah. and Audrey's like, yeah, I mean, it's so far. So fun. It's so and just, fun. Yeah. And it, it's leveled up our friendship too. Yeah. And to like, being co-collaborators and artists That's together right, to make and art together. business partners and yeah. like all these like beautiful yeah. new things. And mm-hmm. just like I said before, sharing it divides the stress and multiplies yeah. the joy. Yeah. So, yeah. so good. Man, I can't yeah. wait for people to get these. Um, is there anything we didn't talk about you want to make sure we talk about? Oh, I don't think so. Don't we so t- lost we, in the convo. We touched on friendship. <laughs> I know. I was so lost in the convo. Yeah. Friendship, friendship. I love that we talked about friendship. About. That's We love that. Love yeah. About that. Even writing about talking about writing is fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I think we... Well, thank y'all for leaving your day jobs to come do this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm it so is, grateful. It is a delight to leave the day jobs. So grateful. Truly. These are yeah, two thank you. really important. I mean, I know we're mostly looking at liturgies for wholeness because it's yeah. new, but yeah. they both are really important. Thank and you. so y'all have really given us a gift with these. So thank you. Mm, thank you. So and can I just invite Andy. myself to hang out? Like, can I come to yes. things sometimes? Absolutely. Oh okay, great. You're yeah, always right. invited. Yeah, numbers. Yes. So yeah, you can we please? literally come hang out with us. Okay. Yes. yes, absolutely. We just, we're just supposed to say yes to everything. So I'm just publicly asking are, if I can be in your finger. And publicly we say you're invited. <laughs> okay. We say, yes. what are you doing tonight? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Actually, we're going to get a drink after this. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Go, 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 go. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm grateful. And here's to us being friends in real life. Yay. Oh my God. Oh, so good. Thank you. Uh, Y'all, aren't they the best? Oh my gosh, listen. Trust me that we went to brunch Sunday after church. I just adore them. I think they are so fun and such good writers. I feel so inspired to be a better 
writer, a better poet, a better user of words because of Audrey and Elizabeth. They are just the best. Listen, let me tell you, already at my house in New York, I have got their liturgy sitting by the bed. I just feel like that's such a good thing to have right by me all the time. So go get your copy of Liturgies for Wholeness. If you don't have Liturgies for Hope, just grab them both. But Liturgies for Wholeness is the new one. Go follow them on social media. Tell them thanks so much for being on the show. And I know they're doing some events here and there and everywhere. So just keep up with that as well. Go see them when they are in your town. If you have any questions about this episode, just drop them in the Q&A box on your Spotify app if you're a Spotify listener. Or you can send them to us on Instagram at That Sounds Fun Podcast. We'll try to answer them for you there. If you need anything else from me, you know I'm embarrassingly easy to find. Any F Downs on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, currently in Nashville. Anywhere you need me, that is where you can find me. And I think that's it for me today, friends. Go out or stay home. Do something that sounds fun to you, and I will do the same. Today, what sounds fun to me? Oh, man, what sounds fun to me today? We've got a snack at the office that I am withholding snacking on till a little bit later. So what sounds fun to me are these little... uh cookies that have chocolate and they have um, toffee and they have saltines. Some people call them toffee saltines. They are delicious. I usually have them at Christmas, but I'm about to have them today. So that sounds fun to me. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you back here on Thursday with our monthly recap as we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of That Sounds Fun. Every month we're recapping a different year with our buddy, Eddie Koffeld. So get ready because on Thursday we're talking all about 2015. We'll see y'all then. That sounds fun. That sounds fun.